I want you to think our whole life we've been focusing on behavior modification, which is the very tip. And what Jesus does in these three chapters is he comes in and he brings us below the surface of our heart. And he lets us see the mountain that lies beneath that's unconquerable on our own. And so actually what happens is in Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7, Jesus points out our utter hopelessness, His total sufficiency, and the absolute need of the Holy Spirit. This is a relevant message for today. It's a relevant message for our youth. It's a relevant message for our children. It's a relevant message for our adults. It's a relevant message for our church leadership. Because we say we love God and we love others. So what we're going to see is that there's a little bit difference. So, and, um, and I'm literally, just so you know, um, I'm, I'm going to be going over today. Um, I'm going to get through at least the first beatitude today. Um, seeing the crowds, he went up on the mountain. Now, guys, we know the crowds here is exactly um, who's been attracted to this place. This isn't just his closest disciples. These are the crowds that gathered uh, to come see the show, right? It's like, it's like you two coming here to Gracemont and putting on a free show. If you two's in town, we're shutting down shop, right? We're going to go see the show. And so here we have crowds of people flocking Jesus. And he went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And we talked about how this word disciples is the broader term of disciples, meaning it's anyone who could follow Jesus either close, like his inner 12, or further back from the back, like the majority of the followers. But what we're going to find is Jesus is going to hear quickly, he's going to lessen the crowd, right? He's going to weed the crowd out. Why? Because he's going to ask them to drink his blood and eat his flesh. They were like, uh, we just came for the free bread. <laughs> Don't know what this is about. But see, Jesus said, really what I need you is I need you to take me and I need you to get me inside of you. All right, so he opened his mouth. He sat down, disciples came to him. And when he opened his mouth, verse 3, he taught them, saying, and this is where we're going to end. We're going to end with uh, the first beatitude. What he's going to do is he's going to teach them eight beatitudes. He's going to go on to give them eight beautiful blessings. And here we see, verse 3, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The first thing I want to draw your attention to is the mention of kingdom of heaven. And what you'll notice is in Beatitude 1 and Beatitude 8 is where the kingdom of heaven is presented. So it starts with the kingdom of heaven and it ends with the kingdom of heaven. He says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Right? And then he goes on to say, verse 10, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So that means everywhere in between verses 3 and verses 10 are going to be behavior traits of those who are in the kingdom of heaven. You see how that ties together? And so this very first one is essential. It's the entrance. You cannot get the kingdom of heaven if you are prideful in spirit. See, this is not the man, the one who's poor in spirit, is not the man who comes before God and says, God, look at what I've done with my life. Look at all the money I have spent on the church. Look at what I have done for all these people. Look at what I have sacrificed for your name's sake. Look at me. Look at what I bring to the table. And God, once you see everything, all the good that I've done, you're just going to give me heaven wide open. This is not a man who is poor in spirit. That's what Jesus is going to say, depart from me, for I never knew you. See, we know what it's like conceptually to be poor physically. Every one of us who have taken breath at some point in our life have experienced some level of poverty, though here in the West it's nothing like the rest of the world. But what is it to be poor in spirit? See, this word poor is actually a banking term. It means bankrupt. This is, you can literally say, based or blessed are those who are bankrupt in spirit. What? They're going to get the kingdom of heaven? What are you talking about, Jesus? What are you talking about? 
I thought it was blessed are those who fulfilled the 613 laws, God. I thought, I thought blessed are those who are strong in spirit, right? That's what the world says. No, Jesus says, blessed are those who come before God and say, God, I am spiritually bankrupt and I have nothing to bring to the table. I fall at your feet in complete mercy, God. Take me as I am. Jesus says, that man, that woman, that child will get the kingdom of heaven. If you want to see a picture of that, turn with me to uh, Psalm 51. All you guys are very much aware of this psalm. It's David's lament for his sin. It's David's returning to God. It's David's realization that he is bankrupt. Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God. According to not his works, but according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy. You see the pattern here? David ain't bringing nothing to the table. Right? Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin, for I know my transgressions and my sin are ever before me. Against you and you only have I sinned and done what is evil on your side, so that you may be justified in your words and blameless in your judgment. See, David knew, even though he didn't have Jesus, he knew there was something below the surface of his heart. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity. And in my sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, you delight in truth in the inward being. You teach me wisdom in the secret heart. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Jesus says, if you want to enter the kingdom of heaven, it's not going to be through the 613 laws. It's not going to be through keeping kosher. It's not going to be through religious fortitude it's not going to be through tradition it's going to be from your bankrupt spirit and he says to this crowd mind you the crowd that wasn't all the way in the crowd that I mean, you can imagine what did the end of chapter 7 say their minds were blown what Jesus poor in spirit but I bring so much to the table, God. How's that setting with you? Man, it's cut me. Because even as a pastor, I get to a place where I think, God, look at what all I've done for you. Even as a pastor, I go before God sometimes and I say, God, look at what I've sacrificed for you. Look at what I've, my family has done for you. Look at what I bring to the table. And you know what Jesus gently reminds me, son? It's just rags. You're bankrupt. You're a beggar. And Jesus is the bread. Blessed is the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. If you bow your heads with me, Brother David, Heavenly Father, we just pray, not for superficial movement, 